In 1849, Scottish immigrant John Muir moved to Wisconsin. After graduating from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, Muir found that he had great talent in his hobby working with machines, but disliked working in factories. In 1868, Muir arrived in Yosemite Valley in the Sierra Nevada mountains. He was overjoyed by the spectacular scenery and announced that he was dead and gone to heaven. On September 30, 1890, Muir published an article about the state of industrialization in Yosemite, which resulted in the creation of Yosemite National Park. During the 1600s through the early 1800s, the only reason people went into the wilderness was for conquest or travel. Muir's ideas about experiencing the wilderness for enjoyment were unprecedented at the time, and his actions revolutionized the way people thought about wilderness. One of the first people who starts to think about preserving the land, preserving the animals, that wasn't where the average person was thinking in the late 19th century. Muir had ideas on preserving wilderness, which drove him to create an organization with the goal to share nature with everyone, to make the mountains glad. This way, the public could join his views on advocating wilderness preservation. On May 28, 1892, Muir and 181 other people created the Sierra Club, with the goal to explore, enjoy, and protect the Sierra Nevada and other scenic resources of the United States. He was then voted the Sierra Club's first president. They come along and, and they um, established the first group that's really thinking about the outdoors in a different way, and that became more and more formalized over the course of the 20th century and now into the 21st century. In 1901, the Sierra Club hosted its first outing, in which the leader, William Colby, led 96 people on a multi-week trip to Yosemite Valley. This trip and trips to come were designed to teach people to love the wilderness and to care about protecting it. This way, the Sierra Club could have more support from the public in their campaigns to protect the environment. These trips were the beginning of the Sierra Club's expansion. In 1903, President Theodore Roosevelt joined John Muir on a camping trip in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Basically, John Muir um, and him just snuck off away from everyone and went up to the mountains for a few days. And I think that was, you know, that trip really inspired you know, the president to, to preserve a lot more uh, national parks. So. Muir was able to convince him to transfer the management of Yosemite Valley and Mariposa Grove from California state government to the federal government. The official bill was passed in 1906. On April 18, 1906, an earthquake hit the city of San Francisco, starting a fire. The fire department was unable to supply enough water to put out the fire because their water pipes had broken. In 1907, San Francisco was still suffering from lack of water which was accentuated by their rapidly growing population. To meet their needs, California State proposed a dam in Hetch Hetchy Valley, which was located in Yosemite National Park. The Sierra Club saw it as illegal to dam Hetch Hetchy Valley because it should be protected as a national park. With time, the damming of Hetch Hetchy Valley turned into a large controversy. John Muir argued that the only reason it was proposed to be in Hetch Hetchy Valley was because it was cheaper than damming other locations. After years of arguments from both sides, damming Hetch Hetchy Valley was declared the logical thing to do. On December 1st, 1913, the law damming Hetch Hetchy Valley was passed. On Christmas Eve of 1914, John Muir died in Los Angeles from pneumonia. He was greatly disappointed about the loss of Hetch Hetchy Valley and the extinction of passenger pigeons. His wife had died nine years earlier and he had been living alone since. After John Muir's death, the Sierra Club was able to create the John Muir Trail in his honor a 200-mile trail that runs from the floor of Yosemite Valley to the summit of Mount Whitney. Also, John Muir is featured on the California Quarter, produced in 2005, and on April 21st, John Muir Day is celebrated. The National Park Service was put into action in 1916 when U.S. President Woodrow Wilson signed an act. This moved 35 national parks and monuments from state management to federal management to ensure protection. A Sierra Club member, Stephen Mather, then became the National Park Service's first director. Ansel Adams, a Sierra Club member since 1919, was asked to be the official photographer for the high trip in the Canadian Rocky Mountains in 1928. Adams continued his work with the Sierra Club after that trip and turned into a passionate environmental activist. He even created the This is the American Earth exhibit that toured the country, and his photographs were made into two books. Sierra Nevada, the John Muir Trail, and This is the American Earth. Today, he is remembered as an inspirational photographer and for his belief that humans and the environment can coexist peacefully. In 1912, 
a future executive director of the Sierra Club, an influential environmental activist was born. His name, David Brower. Brower studied two years at the University of California, Berkeley before dropping out, a decision he deeply regretted later in life. His interest in climbing and mountaineering led him to join the Sierra Club in 1933. After Muir's death, the Sierra Club had been lacking real leadership, and they needed someone to increase membership. David Brower stepped up to the plate, and soon the Sierra Club was growing. In 1952, after returning from World War II, he was elected the first executive director of the Sierra Club. Under his leadership, the Sierra Club was able to write and publish photographic books that spread environmental awareness throughout the public. He fought politically to keep wilderness areas free from development. David Bauer led the Sierra Club to become a force stronger than ever in the fight to keep environmental areas untouched by new developments. He was also nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize three times. An inspiration to all the legacy he left was of being one of the most successful environmental activists of all time. In 1953, the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation began to propose dams on the Colorado River near Dinosaur National Monument on the border of Colorado and Utah. The Sierra Club did not want these dams to be built. They took action by encouraging tourists to come to Dinosaur National Monument and raft on the Colorado and Green Rivers. The Sierra Club heavily influenced the media through articles, magazines, and the book, This is Dinosaur, about why the dam should not be built. In 1959, after years of the Sierra Club's tireless efforts, the plans for the dams on the Colorado River were defeated. Unfortunately, their victory came at a price. Instead of damming the Colorado River, a dam was to be built in Glen Canyon, about 200 miles downriver of Dinosaur National Monument. The Sierra Club also led the movement to prevent dams from being constructed in Marble Canyon and Bridge Canyons, which would result in the flooding of the Grand Canyon. In their fight, the Sierra Club published ads in the newspapers, such as the New York Times, that lobbied for public support in their campaign against the dams. The Grand Canyon was, you know, there was a time when, when that was proposed to have a series of dams that would have flooded the, the Grand Canyon, and the, and the Sierra Club was instrumental in, in stopping that. Um. In one of the most famous ads, the Sierra Club wrote, should we also flood the Sistine Chapel so tourists can get near the ceiling? In 1966, plans for the dams were discontinued, partially due to the Sierra Club's efforts. By 1978, many acts had been passed, including the Wilderness Act, National Environmental Policy Act, and Water Pollution Control Act. Redwood and Grand Canyon National Parks had been expanded as well. Today, the Sierra Club continues to protect the environment. They have helped to get the Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act, and Endangered Species Act passed. Currently, there are three major campaigns that are trying to stop pollution and therefore climate change, the largest environmental problem today. Beyond Oil, one of the campaigns is standing up for anti-oil, stop dangerous drilling problems by raising pollution standards and promoting electric and cleaner cars. Beyond Coal, another campaign is against burning coal because it pollutes the air. The Sierra Club has shut down 181 coal-fired power plants. Lastly, in the campaign Beyond Natural Gas, the Sierra Club is working to end all natural gas drilling and fracking, which can pollute the air and water and even cause earthquakes. All of these campaigns show the Sierra Club's leadership in the United States by protecting the climate and our Earth as a whole. I think Sierra Club as a whole has made the world a better place in that we're, we're preserving and we're trying to keep our natural resources from being totally de depleted. Currently, there are 2.4 million members and supporters, 250 million acres of land have been protected, and there are over 20,000 outings a year. The Sierra Club has grown to be the oldest and most powerful environmental organization of the United States. Since its creation, countless areas have been protected for future generations to enjoy. The Sierra Club's legacy lives on today as they continue to protect land and inspire people to enjoy the outdoors. Who knows, you know, if it had never existed, if John Muir had never been born, I don't know where we'd be, but I'll bet you the environmental movement wouldn't have been as, as strong as it currently is.